Right now we have a project with Clay Caribbean as a sub-grant awardee and that is from funding from the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund under the Ecosystem-Based Adaptation Project. The project main goal is on coral restoration. We work in between two countries, that is in St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. On mainland we have one site in Cumberland and then on Union Island we have five sites, three at Ashton Lagoon, one at TCMP and one at Richmond. And what we do is to really look at coral restoration where we could look at reefs that have the potential and that are healthy and see how we can work with community to plan back some of or to restore some of these reefs. At Ashton Lagoon area, we use three different structures to grow, grow corals. We use the table structures, we use the spider structures and also the tree structures. We normally collect fragments from nearby colonies around Union Island. Um, we also collect fragments at the Pitti St. Vincent Nursery, um, which is very close by. Um, so those two locations are where we normally collect fragments to compare the different genotypes um, while doing this coral nursery project. Why are we doing this? Essentially in the 1980s, there was a mass die-off of the acroporids. Uh, that's the elk horn and the stag horn corals um, as a result of a, a disease. And while we have noticed that they are coming back, they are doing so at a spatial level where it is difficult for them to actually have sexual reproduction occurring. And corals reproduce asexually through fragments as well as sexually through mass spawning. And if the corals are too far apart, the probability of those spawn, spawning um, material, the gametes, coming together to um, produce genets that are more resilient is very low. The younger folks like myself in the early 17s or so gravita um, gravitated towards um, spare fishing. And because there was an abundance of fish, there was abundance of fish. You could, you, sometimes you didn't even need the spear gun. You could, you could, you could, you could virtually catch the fishes with your hands. The reefs there was absolutely golden brown. Stay on the land and see everything beautiful out of the water. Brown, beautiful and nice. No, well they didn't have nothing to, they didn't have nothing for the young gen. Who, 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 who didn't know what was there? Can't explain that phenomenon. But after like maybe a decade or so, coming down into the late eighties or so. I mean, not a marine biologist, and I, I really, I, I couldn't really imagine really what's going on. The corals start changing from golden brown to a whitish scot of grey. So coral restoration is something that has been going on for a long time, and some people say that it is not, um, it is not effective. Uh, but we have to consider context. For example, uh, in just about 2016, we started to do some um, reef enhancement on a reef in PT, on PT St. Vincent, and it was dead. There was absolutely no life. And within the space of four years, we have seen an exponential increase in not only the coral cover as a result of our efforts, but there's been an extremely um, diverse uh, increase in density, uh, increase in species richness of fish and other marine life as a result of the presence of corals in the, uh, on the reef. We've seen a lot of growth with the elk horns, especially because of the fact that they're in just about 10 feet of water and the water is very clear, so they're growing right really nicely. Uh, we've outplanted over 500 uh, species of elk horns and it has been growing at least a 60% survival rate on our outplants with our stag on. So that has been promising for us and we're hoping that in the next uh, 10 to 15, 20 years we will be seeing a lot more of those things 
growing out and um, then it will really uh, fulfill our plan to actually repopulate the reef. So it has now been six years since we have been doing this uh, in the region, um, the Grenadines as well as in St. Lucia. And uh, from the onset in 2016, Sandals Foundation saw the vision and provided seed funding for us to commence our nursery, uh, start our training with our coral gardeners. And now we have a cadre of more than 20 individuals who've been trained. Uh, more, than 20, more than 10 of them are certified in the CARICOM vocational um, qualification. My brother, this program was a program that I wasn't, wasn't really think of, you know, would have made such a great progress because when I heard about the coral gardening and coral planting, I was wondering how you could get stone grow. But while, while, while I'm in the business, in the business, in the business, you know, it's like it's making progress and it, it makes me so proud that I can't even stop doing it. I have to just keep planting. If I even don't stop working for the company, I can do it off my own because it's progressive. It's a progressive move. So here what happened, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Proud coral planter, proud coral gardener. Ain't no carbon copy, eh? it's a real coral planter. You understand? So I'm proud of what I do. Never seen these corals before, but now I get to know them and get to interact with the corals. It's like they're family to me. Basically what I do is I clean the trees from algae and I also take off fireworms from after corals so that they don't destroy them. To be honest, it's always a passion for me to do something that will benefit the country and the world. This program has for Myro is that it brings an income to Myro and also it provides very good habitat for the fish and uh, you know, it brings back the nature onto the island which was destroyed so many years ago. Knowing a part of this program makes me feel very happy that I'm doing this because it's like I'm saving, saving the wall as well. Help, help putting back the, um, helping nature to get back to a, to the stage what what they were before. For instance, no star hand is in Saint Vincent, and going down in the key in the keys and union for for our star hands and putting them in our nursery and then repopulating back up in Saint Vincent is it make me feel like I'm. Doing, a part, doing my part in the world to bring back certain species back in mainland. We have an exchange. We had it with the divers from Union before when they came to RVA to visit us. The whole team came down to then teach the rest of the team in Union how to build the trees, how to implement them on the site, and then also to collect the fragments and then how we populate the trees. Now, because we see, we mostly only have the regular PVC tree structure. And we see for the PVC trees, it's the staghorn fragments, they are growing quite quick on the trees. But uh, the elkhorn fragments, they grow a little bit slower. They tend to grow a bit quicker and do better on the, the table structures. So then for us, especially since we have mostly elkhorn fragments here, we have then decided to see, okay, what type of designs can we make to recreate a table, but in a tree form. Climate change is happening and uh, we are uh, supporting projects which uh, help other countries, for example here in the Caribbean region, to, uh, to adapt to these challenges of uh, climate change. And one of the areas is uh, marine biodiversity to uh, protect the reefs, to uh, help the reefs to be restored. That, that's the main part of, uh, of this project we are financing. And we are here today because we are looking at the project from Clear Caribbean that is a binational project on coral restoration and livelihoods in St. Lucia and in the Tobago Keys in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we help Caribbean islands to build up their own conservation trust funds, basically sustainable finance so they can finance conservation projects.
projects. The coral restoration project is essentially a two-part project. It deals with environmental conservation and restoration, and we also have the dual responsibility for sustainable livelihood. So in an effort to make sure that this project continues for the next 10 to 15 years, we are developing tours and experience around our coral nursery. So this will allow tourists or any visitor who wants to come and understand what we're doing at our nurseries so that they can see how we're growing back the coral and how we're transplanting them back onto the reef in order to, you know, um, replenish the reefs that we would have lost back in the 80s and early 90s to white band disease. Future of the coral restoration program, I would like to see more coral gardeners and more um, sponsors that are willing to be there with us to support our need to show and improve our, our coral reefs. Because you know, we alone cannot do it. We need the help and support of the people around us to get our, to get our stuff going. Sustainable financing, what do we mean by sustainable financing? We're referring to um, funding that is not dependent on the project uh, cycle from donors. And uh, we have been working with Sandals Foundation. Uh, we have a, a paddy specialty dive um, and part of the fees associated with that um, is to go to a special fund that will help the coral gardeners. It is happening but we're not seeing the numbers. Post-COVID, we're not seeing the numbers that we'd like. Perhaps there's a change in behavior. We are currently exploring um, incentives to engage.